I'm Nate Savage from Guitario, and I want to talk to you a little bit about strumming today. Strumming is one of those techniques on the guitar that's so critical and fundamental that it's worth putting in some extra time to get it to a high level. In fact, it's so important that I'm including it as one of the techniques I'm talking about in a new course that I've been working on that proves how putting in concerted focused practice time to develop critical fundamentals and really good technique with those fundamentals can get you better way faster on the guitar. But for this video today, what we're going to talk about is the single most important strumming pattern to develop your strumming technique. And you may be saying to yourself, Nate, how can you say that? There is no one single most important strumming pattern. Well, that may be true, but the strumming pattern that I'm going to show you is so chocked full of strumming techniques that when you get it down and you can play it, your strumming is going to come up to a higher level and you're going to have a lot easier time figuring out strumming patterns in your favorite songs and coming up with your own strumming patterns. So let's jump into the strumming pattern. I'm going to break it down into five easy steps. That way, no matter what level you're at, you can jump in whenever you feel comfortable. Now, the first part of the strumming pattern, to get started, all you're going to do is work on your downstrokes on quarter notes. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and I'm not making any chords right now just so we can concentrate on our strumming. But when you're working on downstroke, you're going to be really focusing on your technique. And the number one thing that I see guitar players do or newer guitar players when they're working on downstrokes is lock their wrist and just strum from the elbow. And that can really hurt you. It can make it difficult to get through the strings. It can make it difficult to keep up with the tempo of the song. So what you do is just loosen up and strum from your wrist and your elbow and get kind of a rotation in there. Pretend like you're trying to flick something off of your hand, right? And that's a really good foundational technique for downstrokes. And you can go a long way with just downstrokes in your strumming. If your technique is really good, they can sound really good and they're really usable in a lot of different situations. So that's step number one. One, two, three, four. Just remember, stay relaxed. Don't lock your wrist and use that rotational kind of movement. And only dig in as much of the pick as you need to in the strings to make it sound. And I was playing a G7 in that little playing at the beginning. So you can put that on if you like. So that's step number one. If you're new to strumming, get that down, spend some time, focus on that. Step number two is the opposite of downstrokes and it's upstrokes, right? A lot of newer players have trouble with upstrokes because they tend to focus on just downstrokes and neglect their upstrokes. So the two tips I have for you for your upstrokes, same thing, just on one, two, three, four. Tip number one is that you don't have to hit all six strings on your upstrokes. Oftentimes, I'll only hit the top three to five strings on my upstrokes, so don't feel like you have to hit all six strings when you're playing for your upstrokes. Also, the second thing for your upstrokes is don't dig too much of your pick into the strings, or it can get caught in the strings and it can feel like it's really tough to get through the strings. Only use as much of the pick as you need, just the tip of it, to get through the strings and make it sound good. So those two things, on the top few strings maybe, and then just enough of the pick to get it through. So work on that technique and really develop that. It's gonna make it a lot easier to learn more complex strumming patterns. So one, two, three, four. So down one, two, three, four. And actually look back at your hand and think about all those tips. Think about the ones for the downstrokes. Think about the ones for the upstrokes too. Taking time to develop your technique on this level will really help you be able to play a lot more complex strumming patterns in the future. So work on your downstrokes and your upstrokes by themselves, and then you can put them together. That's step number three. So instead of just all downs or all ups, you're going to alternate downs and ups on eighth notes. So you have one and two and three and four and. And it may be a little bit difficult to think about the tips for the ups and the downs at the same time, but slow it way down and think about everything all the tips that we've gone over so far. So keep that rotational movement in there. On your upstrokes, don't feel like you have to dig in to all six strings. Maybe only the top three to five strings. Stay relaxed. Really look back at your strumming hand. And also one tip I have here for you is a lot of players find it difficult to kind of hold on to the pick as they're strumming, especially with upstrokes. They find it kind of flies out of their hand. So what you can do is just kind of constantly adjust that pick in your fingers to keep it where you want it, or you can use two fingers to kind of hold on to that pick. I do that a lot if I'm doing some faster strumming, but that's step number three, putting your downs and ups together. One, and two, and three, and four. And only dig enough of the pick 
into the strings to make the sound you want. I'm gonna put that G7 on here. Stay relaxed, get that rotational movement in there. That's step number three. So take some time throughout the next week or two or however long it takes and develop alternating down, up, down, up, one, Step number four incorporates something that's really critical for developing your strumming, and it's called the constant strumming technique. And believe it or not, we've already been incorporating this on the first two steps. Check it out, when you're going through step number one doing all down strokes, you kept your hand going down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, even though you weren't digging into the strings on your up strokes. So you kept your constant strumming technique going one and two and three and four and but you didn't dig into the strings for those upstroke, and that is what the constant strumming technique is. So for step four, we're gonna learn what I would consider like a real life constant strumming technique pattern, and the pattern is one and two and, so just two downstrokes on beats one and two, and then for beats three and four, you're gonna have down, up, down, up. So one and two and three, so two quarter notes and then four eighth notes. Let me do it again. One and two and three and four and one and two, three and four. And so that is your mission. You need to get that strumming pattern down and we're almost there. We only have one step after this. So one and two and three and four. And, and remember all of the technique tips we've gone over so far as far as the downstrokes and the upstrokes. Staying relaxed, one and two, three and four, and one, two, three and four, and one, two, three and four. Let me put some chords on. I'm gonna throw that G7 chord on here and let you hear how this sounds in context. One, two, three, four. So if that's new for you, if that level of strumming is new, take some time, a couple weeks, get it down, do some really intense focus practice. Focus on just the strumming pattern at first and then put some chords with it. The last step to get us to kind of our ultimate strumming pattern is to put a muted strum in with our strumming pattern. You already know the pattern. All you have to do is incorporate one more technique to kind of make the strumming pattern come alive and make it a little bit more percussive, and it's this. On the downstroke of beat three, you're gonna add a muted strum, so all it is is you lift up all the pressure on whatever chord you're making, so we're kind of muting the strings, right? And you mute the strings with your palm as you go through them. So there's not really any notes ringing out. It's more percussive, so one, two, three, four. So it may take you a while to get used to doing that kind of muted strum through the strings, and that's something that you can practice on its own to make it really tight and percussive, and don't be afraid to be a little rough with the guitar to make it sound more like a snare drum. That's what we're kind of trying to imitate here. So one, two, three, and four. One, two, three, So that's, to me, the ultimate strumming pattern that incorporates a lot of different techniques that can get you to a new, higher level in strumming. Take each one of these. If you're a beginner, start with level one and you'll go through the steps. If you're more of an intermediate player, you know, get this fifth version of the strumming pattern down and see what it can do for your playing. Getting the right technique down can really make or break your practice time, and applying that technique to critical guitar fundamentals will help you get better faster. That's what this new course that I'll be announcing very soon really concentrates on. So to find out more about it, sign up for updates, or leave comments, you can follow the link below this video. Stay tuned, it's coming out very soon.